Gentlemen, Antonio here. Let's talk about the difference between a $100 and $1,000 leather bag. I know many of you guys are out there in the market for something like this. Maybe you're just graduating law school. Maybe you've been in the industry for 30 years and you're looking to upgrade your bag. Guys, I want to make sure you get the most bag for your money and the three factors, the three pricing issues I'm going to talk about today. These really can drive up the price. They can help you find a great deal or they can warn you that if you don't see any of these things I'm talking about here, you probably need to stay away from that bag even if it looks like a great deal. At the end of the day, gents, I want you to make a smart purchasing decision. Now, to illustrate the point, I've got a bag right here from Opperman of London, a very cool company. And what I really like about them is they hit the sweet spot in a lot of areas. I feel they're a great value. You can go check them out right here. And to make this really sweet for you guys, I had a wallet that they sent me and I'm going to give it away. All I need for you to do is go check out the website and write down in the comments which of the wallets you guess it is. And many of you guys are saying, well, Antonio, why don't you give me the bag? I'm actually giving this bag to one of my style scholars in the personal image system. So there you go. All right, guys, let's talk about how to get a sweet deal. What you want to understand is 100 to 1,000 to, in some cases, I didn't even put this in the title, but $10,000 for bags. I would say the difference between a 1,000 and 10,000 is actually very minute. We're talking the law of diminishing returns here, but from 100 to 1,000, you can see some very big differences in quality. Now, I'm going to get into leather and build quality here in a second as the other factors, but I do want to stress, if you are willing to compromise a little bit on status symbol, maybe with a company who hasn't been around for a long time, you can find some great deals. Again, Opperman, to me, that's why they fit into that sweet spot. They've only been around for a while. However, they've already built a very strong reputation reputation and bags like this you're going to find fit into that sweet spot of you being able to get a great deal. So pricing factor number one, brand. And let me illustrate this. So you have two bags made in the same factory, different floors, everything pretty much is the same except whenever they're going out to the market, one gets a stamp of a very high status brand, the other one of a not so high status brand. Guess what the price difference is? 10 times difference. The high status brand is going to charge a lot more simply because of the reputation the brand is built up and everything that goes with that. So when I'm talking brand guys, I'm talking reputation, I'm talking service, I'm talking status and I'm talking availability. So reputation is something a brand builds up over time. And there are many companies out there that you can get a great deal, have a solid reputation, but oftentimes it's going to be something that and in my opinion where you can find a great deal is a brand that hasn't been around for a a while that maybe doesn't have their reputation built up but is putting out a great quality product. Now let's talk about status. I alluded to this. This is where you want to be careful. Oftentimes a company simply is going, they've maybe got to deal with a celebrity. They've got somebody famous, an athlete or somebody who is using and wearing their stuff and because of that they're able to command a higher price. Oftentimes tied with the status you'll have limited runs. So very different if the same bag is only made 100 times versus a bag is made 10,000 or 100,000 times. Very different in terms of what the price they're going to be able to command especially on secondary markets. Now, with the brand, also I've brought in service. To me, this is one of the most important things. It goes with reputation, but I think service, them being able to say, hey, we're going to go back, we're going to take care of you. If you have an issue with the bag, if for some reason it has a defect, we will make sure to replace it, to fix it. Those are the kind of things I look for when I'm looking at a company. Pricing factor number two is going to be the tanning process. So if they're using a chrome tanning process, that's where they're using chemicals. This is a process that is actually very, uh, let's just say not very good for the environment, but it's very inexpensive. That right there is often going to be in lower priced products. Now, when we see vegetable tanning, that's going to be done in Italy. It takes a longer process. Oftentimes you're going to see it at tanneries that have been doing this for generations and generations. They have unique processes and that is going to drive up the cost cost of the leather, hence the price of the bag. The third and final pricing factor I'm going to discuss is the quality of the build. So let's talk about the process, let's talk about the hardware, and let's talk about the thread. Okay, so the process, you're going to see hand and you're going to see machine. I think that actually seeing a combination of them is best, and I'm not saying that hand work is better than machine work. They're just simply being able to bring it together, but you will see oftentimes the more handwork that goes into something, something that is advertised is actually being 
hand sewn, handmade, the price can start to creep up. But machine sewn, it doesn't mean it's worse quality, but it does mean that, you know, certain if it's 100% machine made, that maybe there are going to be more defects, that maybe they weren't able to do the small details, which only you can do with your hands. Or if you value artisan work, then you're going to want to make sure that there was a good amount of handwork put into it. Now let's talk about the hardware. The key things you want to look at, first off, look at the zipper. Look how it moves across. Is it smooth? Does it get caught? What's the size of the zipper? Does everything look like it's well put together? Then you want to look at the other pieces of hardware. Look at the metal. What types of metal do they use? Does it look like it's actually, you know, can you see the details? Are they using rivets and key points where you're going to actually have stress on the bag? What you want is a bag that's functional, that's going to last. And a lot of companies, they're going to try to cut prices by actually going with something cheap. If a company paid attention on the hardware, then most likely they paid attention in the other parts of the build as well. Finally, let's look at stitching. So you want to make sure that there are no missed stitches. You want to go up and down, look how tightly it's put together. Look at the quality of the thread. Make sure none of it's fraying or it's coming off. Look at where they've put it together and just the small details. Are there any loose threads? Did they actually reinforce on ends? Small details like that are going to make the difference between a $100 and $1,000 bag. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and make sure to go check out Opperman. I've got this beautiful wallet I'd love to give away. All I need to know is what color, what style do you think it is? Just let me know in the comments and I'll be giving away here in the next couple weeks. That's it guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.